people may be a little confused, so maybe just explaining the situation. Okay, I see the recording message. So, welcome everyone. Um, so, uh, I am filling in for Kit tonight. Um, she got delayed, and uh, second change of plan is Tracy was going to do the intro lesson tonight, um, and she got pulled into a work event. So, uh, we have Kathy Cox, who is more than she's our master beekeeper, so she's more than <laughs> capable of answering questions. And so, uh, the presentation Tracy was going to do will be next month on space management, and Kathy will be doing a Q&A session tonight for the first 30 minutes of the presentation till 7. So I, I believe uh, what we've decided on in the chit chat in the last few minutes is if you have a question to use the little raise your hand icon, it's up in the top bar, a little bit over to the left from the leave button, um, and just raise your hand, and then as your hand gets raised, uh, Mengele will pick on people, and then you can open up your mic um, and then ask your question or you can type it in the chat if you don't want to talk and uh, we'll just uh, facilitate that way tonight uh, so uh, with no further ado uh, Kathy do you want to introduce yourself and then start taking questions sure um, my name is Kathy Cox and um, I've been a past trustee for Puget Sound Beekeepers and I'm the education chair so I get all of the classes set up for you guys and um, I'm usually in the chat so if you ask questions during any of the classes this year um, I was the one answering your questions um, and that's kind of what we're going to do tonight is just whatever kind of questions you have ask me and if I can I will answer them um, so there's you know a lot going on in the hives um, different uh, areas have have different things going on but I think by now everybody's got some drones and uh, queens are able to get out and get mated and our weather is better so um, you know it's probably uh, a good time to ask any questions you have about how to um, keep your hives going what to feed them how to uh, not eliminate swarming but um, watch out for swarming and um, then the meeting will be uh, more on uh, swarming so uh, you're going to get your fill tonight so if you have questions please raise your hands we already have three okay buzz, so buzz feel free to take the floor and then i have eileen yeah good evening. hi buzz hi <laughs> um yeah i've been a beekeeper for about 40 years off and on um uh, not always successful but um i live in bothell and we have, uh, had this last fall i had a, a black bear get into my uh, beehives and, uh, basically destroy them and um just uh, recently on uh, the local ring uh, group the uh, black bear is back in town and so I was just wondering um, what might be uh, the best uh, method for me, even though we're in a, you know, I mean, we're in Boston, um, and I wouldn't expect to be a problem, but what can I do to protect my bees? From this? Probably come back since he was here last fall. Right. Once bees find you, I mean, once bears find your bees, they usually do come back. Um, so I've been very lucky. I have 800 acres right across the street and there are bears in there and I have a chain link, six foot chain link fence around and so far so good. But uh, Tracy um, up at her cabin uh, has had bears and what she did that has been totally successful is she put up a six foot um, chain link dog run and then has five um, lines, electrical lines there. And I have read and I have heard from other beekeepers who have dealt with bears that you bait it with bacon. So when the bear comes and goes for the bacon, it gets zapped and they usually uh, don't like that and won't come back. So, um, you know, that's that's what I know. I don't have experience my own, but um, that's what I've learned from other beekeepers keepers who have been successful in um, being able to keep their uh, bees after the bears have found them. Okay, I have some work. Good luck. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, if you have any questions, just raise your hand. We had Eileen next. Eileen, hello. Eileen, if you're speaking. Okay, hi. Yeah, okay, so um, Kathy, per your instruction, I did put a feeder, a top feeder on. And, oh, I, and I checked it after a couple of days. It was full of algae. Um, uh, what did you put in the feeder, I guess, is the best oh, question. Yeah. Uh, sugar, sugar and water, and I didn't heat it or anything. I just, you know, did two to one, a two to one sugar solution. Uh, right now you want to do one to one. And uh, it's probably a good idea to throw a splash of vinegar in there. Okay. And it will help prevent the mold. Okay. Um, and and um, don't put more than your bees can take. So give them a little bit and then uh, watch it and see how long it takes for them to take that down and, uh, you know, judge that way so that you don't overfeed. Um, okay. A lot of people think, oh, fill it up and then I don't have to get in there. But um, if you don't have a real strong hive, uh, you're likely to get mold. Okay, then the other, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't mold, it was actually algae. Algae, but, right. Yeah. Um, the other uh, question is, I, I have, uh, does anybody ever get slugs in their hive? Oh, gosh, yes. Oh, God, it's yeah. so horrible. What right. do you do? Um, you know, I use Sluggo, uh, so it's non-toxic for your pets. Yeah. And um, I just put it around the base of the hive. Oh, okay. Uh, where your le if you've got legs, put it around the base of the legs, uh, yeah. just so that the slugs, you know, have to cross over it to uh, to get up, and um, that usually um, prevents it. Okay. They still find their way in, but um, yeah. you know, you can you can keep them down if you keep uh, putting sluggo out. Well, I found that uh, I've cinnamon is the ticket for ants. That's oh great. yes. Oh my mm -hmm. god. It you works can like also that. mulch under your hives. With like the the cedar mulch because the slugs don't like to be on I that. I have cedar chip. They're sitting on a big bed of cedar chips. But but is it, are they old or fresh? Because it's fresh uh, chips. They're they pretty don't fresh. Like they're they're play chips that I got um, early in the spring. You can also take uh, wood ashes from your fireplace oh. and sprinkle those around. It okay. slices their soft belly. So um, that's another hint for okay. slugs. Thanks. Mm -hmm. You bet. All right, next we have Jerry and then it'll be Lisa. Hi, Jerry. Hey, Jerry, if you didn't unmute yourself, I can't hear anything yet. Hey, Jerry. <laughs> Jerry is muting himself. I think there might be a sound issue. Jerry, if you want, you can type your your question in the chat if that's doable, and then I can relay it. And uh, for anybody who has a bear uh, question, uh, Magali put a, a, a link in there uh, yeah. with some information. So please check out the chat. Can you hear me now? Does that work? Oh, better. No, no. Sorry, my dog's barking. <laughs> no, I'm on video. Butter, come here. Butter. Sorry. <laughs> can, you, can you hear me now, Kathy? I sure can. Oh, okay. What's your question? So um, I'm a new, fairly new beekeeper. I'm, I've been at this for about a year. Butter, um, come here. And two two Fridays ago, my 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 single colony swarmed. And I caught, oh my gosh. I caught the swarm and I got some equipment from um, Krista Connor and I hey. got, got that into the um, the new hive. And then yesterday, um, the primary hive swarmed again and it threw at least two and I caught one of them. Mm -hmm. the, the other one's about 50 feet up in a cedar tree and it's been there since noon yesterday. And I've okay. got... Jamie came over. Jamie, um, I can't think of his last name right now. And we put a, a like a bait box under it. And we Good. Put another. Um, I got a like a ten frame box and put it on my garage roof. Great. But, yeah, and and so it's been a day and a half, and they're still up there in that cedar tree. Is there anything I else I should do? Um, you know, 
it's really hard when they're that high up. Um, if you uh, have lemongrass, you can put just a tiny drip of lemongrass. They get repulsed by a lot. So just the tiniest little bit, a Q-tip amount of uh, lemongrass, and that might be enough to attract them. Um, the other thing, uh, I had a friend who was a fisherman, and he used a... Uh, fishing pole to throw a line up over a branch and then uh, it had a weight on it so it came down and he put um, a, a tied a frame to that and pulled that up and the bees got on the frame and then he put it into the box on the ground and the rest of the bees came down I'm sure that he must have gotten the queen uh, for that to happen but um it's really difficult when they're that high up and, and um, I, I don't have any, you know, super tricks. Um, if you can get your bait box up, bait box up as high as possible, uh, I think you're, you're doing everything. If anybody else has um, some hints for uh, getting up high in a tree to get bees out, um, please put something in chat so that uh, everybody can take advantage of your knowledge. I did grass oil on on cross and I bet I used too much. Uh, did you say you used too much? I bet I did. Yeah, I bet that's the problem. yeah. Well, maybe you know, swap it out. Uh, you know, swarming. Um, you can't prevent it. But the thing uh, that new beekeepers don't realize is they think if they just put a super on top, they're giving the bees more space and that's gonna take care of the problem. But I always tell my students to make space in every box, put a undrawn frame, put a drawn empty frame, um, you know, give the bees some work to do and uh, they tend to stay put and, um, not uh, swarm. Also, uh, your swarm cells are going to be on the bottom of your second box. And all you have to do is just tip a box up and look under there and see if you have any little peanut looking shells hanging down. And um, those are your queen cells. And then the best thing you can do is learn how to split and split out those queen cells and leave a couple in that original hive um, because they probably are going to swarm and that will leave you with a queen to take over. And swarms usually issue between 10 and two. So if you're at home, just keep your eyes out um, if you're expecting a swarm and maybe you'll be able to catch them. They usually don't go too far from uh, your apiary, sometimes only about 50 feet. Um, so I hope that helps and, um, you know, Google swarming and listen to Pat and Paul Perkins tonight because they're going to talk all about swarming. Yep. Looking forward to it. Good. Good. And somebody asked a question about Honey Bee Healthy. I think all of those uh, supplements are good. Just make sure you read the instructions and don't overdo it because, uh, the bees like a little bit of some of these things, but they don't like it when you uh, just go gung-ho and give them uh, way more than the instructions uh, allow for. And uh, somebody has a question about what to be feeding now. Uh, right now you want to be feeding 1-1 one, one syrup. And I know that people get really confused about syrup. Um, I take the easygoing attitude, and if I have a bucket and I put four inches of sugar in it, I put four inches of water in it. The bees are not, um, they don't have measuring cups, so they're not like looking at you and saying, oh, you're giving me too much sugar, you're too much water. Yeah. They are going to take it up. So, um, you know, don't make a big deal out of it, but one one now is going to help uh, your colonies build up. Uh, we have uh, so Lisa ask a question. And actually, Arthur, you're next, so I, I might let you uh, ask your question directly after Lisa's done. Okay, Lisa, go for it. Hi, hey, this is perfect for me. Um, so I am picking up my two packages tomorrow, and I pulled out all my old um, my um, boxes from last year. I've actually cleaned them out, and, the, and so I have a lot of extra honey 
fill in those frames quite a bit. Uh -huh. and, um, I my question is, um, how do I space how when I'm installing them tomorrow? I'll have empty frames and I'll have frames that have partly honey and then I have full frames of honey. How do I put the frames in for tomorrow? Because I have them in now with two. I went, I alternated, but now I'm, I heard you say, you know, we need to make them work a little bit more and they're not going to have to work that hard. <laughs> so I installed them with the box I just set up tonight. Well, hopefully with a package, you're not going to have a crowded hive. Are, are you in deeps or mediums? I'm in deeps. Okay, so you're going to get five frames uh, worth of bees probably in a three pound package. And uh, so they shouldn't be too crowded and you shouldn't have to worry about swarming right now. What I would do is I would put um, about four drawn frames in the middle and then I'd put honey on either side of that and I would give them a pollen patty up on top. And I would also put a top feeder on. Uh, okay. They may not take the, the syrup in the top feeder. Uh, and you can, you know, you can judge by uh, what they're taking. If they're not taking it, fine. Um, and I also, if you have um, capped honey, I like to take my hive tool and just scratch it open because sometimes it's cold around here at night and that wax capping can be just a little tough for them to break open when they aren't a full 10 frames of bees. That 10 frames, it's very warm in there, but if you have three to five frames of bees in a package, um, uh, it's just not quite warm enough. So you could just scratch across the the um, capped frame and that should really help. Okay. That, Did I answer that, everything? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I had one other question, um, which uh, sure. I was, um, so my assumption at first was, okay, I don't need to add any sugar syrup, but then I thought, well, don't I need to give them fumagellin for nosema during this time so then that was my purpose of giving them syrup do, if, do I if you if you are getting a package uh hopefully they don't have any type of bee diarrhea they should be uh they should be healthy hopefully the the breeder has um you know not sold you something um that is an unhealthy package of bees um and uh i wouldn't worry about uh, medicating them at this time. Oh, okay. If you see, if you see all sorts of brown spots on the outside running down the front of the hive, that's an indication that, th that they've been locked up for a long time. It doesn't necessarily, uh, mean that you've got a nosema problem. Okay. <clears throat> and what, Thank you. And I have one more question. So sure. um, pulled out some, my, some of these old frames and they had webbing on them. And I thought, oh, wax moths. Wax moths. Um, mm -hmm. um, and they had little eggs in there, but not, no larva, nothing. Um, okay. Best thing is to put them in the freezer for about 48 hours and that'll kill whatever is in there. If you've got 10 frames of bees, they should be able to handle the wax moth. But when you're starting with a package, that's just a small group of bees. So I wouldn't give them, uh, you know, any problems to start with. I would go ahead and freeze those frames. Yeah, those were going to go on the second deep um, when I put that second deep, the second deeps on. The first deeps are all clean. Uh, okay, so you don't want to put the second deep on until they've got about 70% of the first deep filled out. Okay, got great. bees on 70% of the frames, and then you can add the, the second. You don't want them to have to try to keep all that space warm. Um, so just don't don't give them too much to start with. Thank you so much. You've been so helpful. Oh, you're welcome, Lisa. All right. Thank you, Arthur. You're next, and then it'll be Sean. Okay, Arthur, shoot. What do you got Hello. for me? Hello, can Hi. You hear me? Hi. I can. I have one hive, four supers. It's carried over from last year. I have evidence of queen, but haven't seen the queen last year and three times this year in the span of two months. The bees are increasing. I see cat brood, I see larva. Mm -hmm. um, 
I see honey, honey's being capped. Um, they're very docile. I just can't find the queen. You know, I couldn't find my queen until I was beekeeping for my second year. Um, there's something about looking really hard and you don't find her when you want to. And you're very good to know that seeing eggs tells you that you've got a queen. You don't always have to see the queen. You don't have to keep the hive open for 45 minutes, searching, searching, searching. As long as you see the eggs in there, you know that um, your hive is queen right. Uh, one of the hints that I have for you is that the queen has what's called a retinue. And this is a circle of bees that are ever changing around the queen. They're grooming her, they're feeding her, they're getting her pheromone. They go out into the hive so other bees that never get to be in her retinue uh, will smell that pheromone and know that they're queen right. So look for a circle of bees and see if the queen's in the middle. Sometimes it's very confusing because she's got her abdomen in a cell laying an egg and she's very hard to see when she's doing that but that circle might give you a hint of where she is. The other thing is that queens move very differently from the rest of the bees. She actually just kind of strides through all of the other bees. And a lot of times they open up and make space for her. So look for something that moves different than all the rest of the bees and you might spot her. Thank you. That's great. How would You're I, welcome. how would I prevent a swarm if, Let's say I go another month and can't find the queen, and I'm, okay. I'm looking for the peanut shell shaped. You um, cannot prevent a swarm. You can mitigate it by looking for those swarm cells, and um, you're going to find them on the bottom of the second box. So if you're opening up the hive and lifting the frames out, and you see those peanut shell uh, like. Um, cells hanging down from the bottom of the frame, um, they're already in swarm mode. And the thing that you can do is to split the hive. And if you're going to split the hive, you want to, if there, say there's three frames that have those peanut shells on them, you leave one frame with two peanut shells so that there's a, a, a queen to take over the hive. Then you take another frame, your second frame with the peanut shells, and you leave two of them on that and put those in another box and one frame of capped brood and one frame of open brood, if you've got it, and food that would go on either side. And then you take the third frame with the capped peanut shells or even the open peanut shells and put that in yet another box. And again, Give them a frame of cat brood and a frame of open brood if you have it and uh, food, pollen and um, nectar. Great. And you're going to want to you're going to want to keep an eye on uh, those small splits. And if you can give them another frame of cat brood in about two weeks from your original hive, it will help them to uh, build up. And uh, the cap brood is going to help support your queen. The bees that are feeding the queen are 8 to 22 days old. They're the same ones that are making the wax for you. And so you need those baby bees to support your queen. Does that make sense? It does. How do you know? what a uncapped brood is looks like uh, well it means that there's no uh, there's no wax over the top of it when you look inside uh, the way the queen lays is in the very middle usually is going to be uh, uh, the larva you'll see the white uh, royal jelly and then you may actually see a little worm that's laying down in a C shape and as you follow that out that's where you're gonna see the eggs. And that's what I describe as uncapped larva. There may be some capped also on that same frame, but um, what I'm saying is you wanna give one frame that's like totally capped brood 
because that's the queen's support. And then you want to give another frame of open brood because that will um, be the the baby bees that take over after the cap bees go through their babyhood and then become foragers. So that supports the queen for quite a long time. Great. Thanks for your time. You bet. All right. Next we have Sean and then we'll have Sadie. Okay, Sean, what do you got for me? <laughs> How's it going? I just have a really quick question. So I'm a second year beekeeper as of this year. I'm running seven hives right now. I had three survivors over winter, four nukes, so total seven. One of my surviving hives, I did an inspection today, and I feel they're actually kind of digressing a little bit. They're in the 10, 10 frame deep, but I'd say they only have about three and a half frames of brew of bees. After okay. the inspection, they are there. The queen is laying, but I feel she's probably getting old. My okay. question is, should I potentially merge them? Or I was thinking about digressing down to a five frame nuke to see if maybe they would swarm slash supersede her because I think she is getting old. And I was just trying to get some thoughts on that. Okay. You don't want to make them swarm. They will supersede her all on their own. If she's starting to get old and losing pheromones, right. uh, maybe doesn't have sperm left, they know that and they will supersede her. The supersedure cell is going to be up somewhere on the frame. It's not going to be down on the bottom and there's usually only one. Um, so that's how you can tell that they're being superseded. Um, as far as, uh, you know, maybe if that hive isn't doing especially well, uh, you could give it a boost by swapping positions with a, uh, a really booming hive. And then the foragers from that booming hive would build up that old queen's hive. And maybe she just needs more bees so that she knows it's okay to lay more eggs. Because if she doesn't have bee support in there, she's right. going to be laying just a little brood nest. So okay. you can always you can always swap a uh, hive that doesn't have a lot of bees in it with a hive that does. Okay, I can try that. Try with one. Okay, good luck. I have one more question. Sure. On the two out of the four nukes as of today, it seemed like there was way ex way too much moisture on the inner cover, like to the point where it almost seemed like it was raining down. Is that probably oh. like lack of ventilation, or is that just? Uh, Do you have an upper point? entrance? Not yet. Not on those two. No, okay. I would put an upper entrance in there. Okay. So there's a good air circulation. Um, and then what are you using uh, on the bottom? Uh, do, you, do you have some sort of uh, uh, reducer there? Yes. Is Just it on of, the small of, opening or the large opening? They're actually, they're kind of a homemade. They're kind of a half, half size right now. I'm using a couple of like repurpose two by fours just to kind of close up half the size of the entrance. I so see. Okay. Open. Well, maybe maybe just open it all the way. If you okay. if the if, if you don't have any problem with robbing uh, going on, which usually yeah, you don't this time of year, um, I would just uh, give them uh, you know okay. more more ventilation and definitely an upper entrance should help that. Okay, I'll give it a try. Thank you. All right. Good luck. Thank you. All right, next we have a question from Sadie, and Sadie typed it. So Sadie, feel free to uh, to unmute yourself if you're comfortable with that. Otherwise, I'm actually going to ask a clarifying question for you. I, um, I can I can ask if, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm new, a new beekeeper. I have um, two hives, uh, uh -huh. and I noticed on my first hive inspection a week after I got them, um, that they were building out 80 to 90 percent of the frames. So I added they were in deeps and then I added mediums. And I'm wondering if I should have added a deep or does it matter? You know, it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, when I moved up here from California and started my beekeeping all over again, I went to all mediums. Everything's interchangeable. It makes it so yeah. much easier. And the weight is so good in medium so deep can be 100 pounds a medium's yeah. 40 to 50 maybe i okay. had to take half the frames out of deeps to be able to move them so um okay. you're okay with the mediums they do just fine okay. um that way and you know if you want to make a change to all mediums 
you can put a queen excluder on, put the deep up above. Uh, the nurse bees will go through the excluder and they will take care of the rest of the brood that's hatching out up there. And then once all your brood is out, you can take the deep off and be in all mediums. Okay. Sounds good. Just wanted to make sure there wasn't, I wasn't sure if there was some kind of difference if I was cramping them or, but it sounds no, like it's, it's good to keep ahead of them and give them yeah. space. And like I said earlier, space in each box, you know, you yes. may, that's why I like mediums, because if, if I think that they're getting really crowded in there, I can take a frame out of each box, put it up above the food frame, uh, and, you know, put it up above and give them an empty frame or an undrawn frame. So they've got something to do and they stay busy doing that instead of making swarm cells. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Okay. Who's next? At this point, I don't have any questions popping up unless people with their hands still raised have uh, extra questions. I see um, over there where it yes. says plus 46, oh, yeah. I see a hand raised. Go ahead, Adam. Okay, uh, so I'm first year uh, beekeeper. I have uh, maybe three hives. Hey, <laughs> I'll start by a big thank you for uh, uh, Kathy for probably saving my apiary yesterday. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, I have a California pack that went wild and tried to rob the one day old uh, local nook. And it was so vicious that I'm not sure if the queen is still alive. And that's my first question is uh, only at nighttime or now the apiary is really quiet. And yes. I know it's not the best time to open it now, but then in the daytime, because I have the top feeder, I don't want to open and expose all the smell of the honey to, of the syrup to everybody and create more robbing. So when is the best time to open and actually see if the queen is alive? Okay, how is your feeder sitting on top of an yeah. inner cover? Yeah. Take the inner cover with the feeder, keep it closed up, take that off and set that aside uh, from the hive and you should be okay uh, with opening up. If you're worried about that uh, terrible California nuke, I would just close all of their entrances up while I inspected, uh, or the package I should have said, while I ex inspected the nuke. And okay. again, if you, see, if you see eggs, the eggs are eggs for three days. So you know that you've had a queen within that three day period. Now, I, I, I'm not sure about our, our count there, but you may need to uh, check it, uh, you know, uh, tomorrow or the next day to get through that three day period to know that you still have a queen in there. Okay. And Was you, your queen marked? Yes. yes. Okay. Well, I recognize her before, so I can find her. Um, good, good. She's. Uh, <laughs> All my bees are yellow, and she's the only thing black that walk in her hive. Oh, uh, good. Um, uh, my question, uh, the connect to that, is to do that in the late day when all the foragers are out, or to do it now when the hives are quiet? Well, it, I think it's much easier if you do it when the foragers are out. Um, I, I jokingly call the drone congregation area the singles bar because that's where all the boys hang out. And they come home usually about five or six at night. And by that time, the foragers are usually in. So um, I think that if you can get in the hive before that, there's less bees to deal with. So you have less bees to look through to try and find the queen. Okay. You still can open a hive as long as it's at least 55 degrees. So daylight at seven o'clock, if it's 55 degrees, you're okay to open it up, but you're going to be going through more bees looking for the clinic. Okay. Um, and my second question is connected to that. Uh, I think that the California package that arrived are both starving because I see how much they are eating and how much the local nook is eating is just... One is like ladies that seep a little bit, and the other one's like animals that are just drowning themselves. Was uh, it was the can that was in the package? Was there any syrup left in that? Maybe drops. They're probably starving. Sure. Yeah. 
Uh, and they'll settle down after a couple of days because the foragers can get out and and uh, you know bring nectar in. They may not have any place to store it, but they can be feeding it to each other. So uh, at least that should help a bit. Okay, and that's my question: is when to how to recognize that the the because now I have all the highs with the reducer and the minimum. How uh -huh. do I know that I can go beyond that? Because today it seems like there is a traffic on the California. Uh, pack on both of them it was just traffic the bees trying to enter and the nook was relaxed and quiet so the nook i know that it's not but i don't know if when right well remember those bees in the package have been locked up and, and bees don't poop inside the hive so a lot of them are going let me out i gotta go and so you're gonna see a lot of that just kind of hysteria for the first couple of days after you hive a package um, that should calm down. Um, and it may be that your packages have more foragers than house bees. So you're okay. seeing a lot more traffic. Okay. Um, okay. You know, it happens because in packages, they're just weighing out bees from all these hives, unrelated bees. And you don't know, and they don't know, the, the breeder doesn't know, uh, how many are house bees, how many are the foragers. So you may have have an overabundance of foragers. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. So we, we should uh, be wrapping up soon. Maybe one more question. Uh, Jeff, I'm actually sending a message to Paul. I saw that both Paul and Pat dropped off and they seem to be having had a hard time getting back in. So I'm trying to troubleshoot that. Oh, OK, no problem. Um, so uh, maybe the people of their hands raised will finish this. I don't know, that's two or three questions there. I see three hands up. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Sarah Jacobs. Uh, this is my first year beekeeping. I just got two nukes on Sunday. So this is literally day three. I'm very excited. Um, I've hived the nukes in their new homes. Um, originally had them on, uh, had the hives on concrete blocks, um, literally within 24 hours. One of the hives, the Carniolan hive, um, was being just, it was just, uh, ants were causing a nuisance. Oh, uh huh. Um, and so I'm wondering if there's any good repellent that I can try. Um, I tried, you know, I did some research online and I saw um, sprinkle ground cinnamon around and yes. you know, used some mint. Um, so I did both of those things. Uh, it didn't seem to keep them away. I went back and checked today and there were still ants on that same hive. So I actually, um, I elevated the hive off the ground. It's about good. Two or three feet off the ground now. Um, so I've got some cinder blocks and two by fours that I put together this afternoon. But my main question is, are there other options to try to keep um, ants out? Um, and then I had another question, but I've lost it. So if I think of it again, I'll I'll unmute and ask. But yeah, okay. Ants, help. Well, um, if you can put your um, hives on a hive stand, then you can use like tuna cans filled with oil and put the legs in those and that'll stop the ants. But if you're using cinder blocks, other than putting cinnamon all over and all around the cinder blocks, uh, you know, I don't know of uh, anything else that you can do. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the ant treatments and some of the organic ones that I use are to use honey and borax, but that's going to attract uh, your bees. So you don't want to be using that around the hives. Um, if anybody else here has got a hint on what to do with ants or has had an ant problem that they've been able to satisfy, uh, please put something in the chat or unmute and pop in here and, and uh, give us your wisdom, please. For those stubborn, the stubborn ants that are hard to get rid of, uh, look for the trail and then use vinegar and spray down the trail because they've marked, they, they leave scent markers for how they find back, find their way back to the food. So vinegar will erase that. So it'll make it harder for them to find the hives again. And then they get there and they smell that cinnamon, they'll be less 
incentive size to try to get up into those hives. That's great. Thanks, Jeff. Yes, thank you so much. Um, and I remembered my second question. Um, okay. Do you recommend that I put a feeder in with my nukes um, in their new hive? Uh, they're they're out in the country that I know they have plenty of places to forage. Um, I've seen several of the bees coming back with pouches full of pollen. Um, but do do you recommend <clears throat> using a feeder here at the beginning to strengthen them or just kind of supplement for them? Yes. Or no? Absolutely. Okay. I I would always feed a package and I would always feed a nuke. Um, you know, one to one syrup is what we're feeding now to help them build up. And, you know, if we've got rain, uh, the bees can eat up everything that they got inside the hive in a couple of days. So I would always keep a feeder on and the bees will tell you when they don't need it. They'll just stop taking it. So, um, you know, yes, I, I would definitely feed. And um, I think there's a couple more uh, questions in the chat, which I can't exactly see. Um, oh, somebody's talking about um, the ant problem with the cinder blocks, putting a a planter basin under the cinder blocks will give you a basin to fill with water or oil. That's that's a good idea. They've got, uh, you know, the the uh, they're kind of like big saucers that go under pots. Um, that would be good to put under your cinder blocks. Uh, that's a great that was from Jay Wick, whoever Jay Wick is. Thank you. That's a great idea. And uh, okay, uh, somebody's got a thing about disc brake grease, but again, you know, the bees can get stuck in that. Uh, that would worry me. And uh, Kevin has a question about the importance of keeping a log. Absolutely, it's critical that you keep a log. Um, there's something on PSBA uh, that you can use. There's something called Hive Tracks online that you can use. I started out with a notebook and I've kept with a notebook. I can put pictures in it. I'm free form. I can put anything in there that I want. I can write a whole bunch about one hive and very little about the next. And I use the uh, margin to put notes about what I need to do or what I need to bring to that colony the next time. So it makes it real easy when I'm getting ready to go out and do a hive inspection following that one to bring everything that I need. I don't have to leave a hive open and run and go get something. I've got everything that I need. I, I put when a queen's gonna hatch, I have all of my information in that in that margin. And it's really easy when you're sitting in your chair to, at night to go over it and take a look at, at uh, you know, what you've done and what you need to do. So I, I really think it's, um, it's great to uh, do a log and um, it will really help you be a better beekeeper. Uh, Magali's got, um, uh, a uh, message there in the chat, which is the link to uh, the hive inspection sheet on the PSBA website. So take a look at that, please. And I don't know if I've missed any questions in the chat. Um, so, hi, uh, this is Sven. Um, qu question, I have a second year hive, actually two second year hives. One is a sipper from the feeder. She, she, she doesn't eat as much. The other one I'm calling my sugar queen because she <laughs> the bees from it will just eat, eat from the feeder no matter what. And this was the same last year. Um, and in fact, it, at this point, they are backfilling the hive. Um, today, I took that feeder off because it seemed like it wasn't worth keep feeding them at this point and just let them forage. Is that, do you think that that was a good idea or should I have kept feeding them? Uh, question, do you have all drawn comb or do you want to have drawn comb um, in your honey supers? Do you need do you need to have new comb drawn out? No, if not you do. Time. OK, if you do, I would recommend that you keep feeding them. I I personally feed because I put um, I sell so many nukes that I my my frames are going out the door um, and I'm and I'm putting undrawn frames on. So I uh, feed right up until the honey flow, uh, the blackberry honey flow starts. OK, 
right. Thank you. That's it. You bet. So, um, I, Kathy, you're not going anywhere. Um, for anyone else who has questions, I think it'd probably be safe to put them in chat. Um, so sure. that we can keep moving on. I, I want to make sure we check in with uh, Megley to see if we were able to get Pat and Paul Perkins back. Maybe I'm trying to track them down. Do you have their number by any chance? Um, I may have their number. Okay. Uh, so then I guess uh, I will jump off and see if I can call them. Um, Kathy, I guess if there's more questions. Um, it looks like um, I don't. I know can keep going if you want, Jeff. Author Eric Anderson <laughs> or Emma, looks like Howgate. Uh, oh, Howgate. that's Jess Lynn. Jess Lynn. Yeah. I asking. I'm feeding pollen patties, not not sugar water. Okay. Um, what uh, what what are your hives? Are they are they <laughs> existing? Or are they new? New nooks. New nooks. Okay. Uh, definitely new nooks. You want to feed, feed, feed. Um, it's really important until they get established, until they store up, that um, you're giving them one one syrup. Pollen patties are great. That helps uh, the queen to keep uh, laying. She knows that she's got resources there. But um, the syrup's very important. And, and uh, like I've said before, um, if, if we get a couple of days of rain, um, in a, in a new hive, especially they can eat up everything that they've got stored. So I would definitely, uh, feed them. Okay. Makes sense. I see Paul's on Paul's back. Yeah. Pat's here too. I'm Pat's here too. Good. Okay. I think Jeff went off to try and call you guys to make sure that you were still with us. <laughs> no way. That's great news. Um, so uh, then uh, thank you, Kathy, for doing uh, Q&A and filling in for Tracy tonight. Um, uh, you're welcome. We'll, um, greatly appreciated. And you are watching chat if someone has another question they think of last minute or um, to segue in uh, to some of our announcements before we transition to Pat and Paul's uh, presentation. Um, so, Puget Sound Beekeepers, welcome. Uh, we're a 5013C uh, nonprofit charitable corp organization. Um, Kit's not here tonight. I'm just filling in from her. I'm past president, is, for those of you that are new and don't know me. Um, some announcements she wanted me to throw out there is tomorrow night, um, a note, maybe short notice for some of you, but if you have any interested in talking to schools, to kids, to other groups about bees, uh, we have a teach the teacher session at seven o'clock. Uh, it is virtual. Um, it is free to attend. Um, we'll teach you all the ins and outs of how to do a presentation um, and you can take it from there. Um, you don't have to be an expert um, unless you're talking to little kids because they tend to be experts for some reason. Uh, so they know everything about bees. They know where the head, the thorax, the abdomen is. Um, but adults, you know, embroidery clubs, all that fun stuff. Um, you know, even your first year beekeepers, you can come off and you'll you'll know way more than your average person. Um, and if you don't know a question, you know, the teacher teacher class will help you uh, have you know point you in the right direction to dealing with those. Um, I'll post the link in the chat here. Um, if you want to attend, you can sign up. Um, oh, Mangley already beat me to it. Um, and so uh, the other thing uh, is uh, neighborhood captains. Uh, Marine's done a great job of updating the form. Um, I don't know if you want to talk to the neighborhood captain program, Marine. Maybe. You want to unmute yourself? All right, well, maybe maybe not. Um, but anyway, uh, the neighborhood captains, uh, it's a great way to, especially in COVID and not being able to get together in the apiary, it's a great neighborhood resource. Every neighborhood captain has sort of their own flavor of help, but generally email questions, sometimes text messages uh, to help answer your emergency questions. Um, I'm a neighborhood captain, Marine's a neighborhood captain, Kathy's a neighborhood captain. There's 
a lot of neighborhood captains out there. Eileen's a neighborhood captain. Uh, beekeeping levels vary, you know, from more intro, more coronation for your neighborhood to master beekeeper level. So uh, if your neighborhood captain can't answer your question, they can point you in the right direction to, to find an answer. Um, and we're always looking for other new neighborhoods to add captains to. If you're interested in joining that program, uh, you can reach out to Maureen. Um, next month, uh, Tracy will do the teach the lesson she was going to teach tonight. Um, and we may have someone from WSU that's not 100% confirmed yet, but that's in the works. Uh, they'll, WSU usually does a they have lots of research projects they're doing, and um, we missed last year, but usually they do a presentation every year, which is uh, an update on what they've been keeping themselves busy at. Um, so uh, let's see. Um, the last thing Kit wanted me to bring up was she's curious for everyone attending, and maybe you want to put a few comments into the chat, but what, um, what do you like about the virtual meetings? What do you hope to get out of PSBA? Um, you know, if you, you know, whatever you can think of, you know, if you've got a few comments there, uh, she's just curious to pick people's brains, get some feedback, um, and uh, we can try to work together. I mean, we're all volunteer organizations, so if there are gaps, we're always looking for people to step up and try to fill them if they have a skill set or uh, a desire to do something um, and help out. Um, our bees all kind of mingle together, so it's in our best interest to work together to create the best healthy bee populations we can and plant flowers and do all that fun stuff. So if you've got any comments there, put them into chat. And I think that's, uh, uh, that's all the items I had from Kit. So I will introduce Pat and Paul Perkins, um, longtime beekeepers in the area. Um, they, you know, I'll let them tell you about their beekeeping experience and their business and everything fun that they do and um, their adventures in catching swarms. <laughs> thank you and uh, hello to you all. And thank you to the Puget Sound beekeepers for inviting us to present something tonight on swarm prevention. Um, getting started here. It's coming here. This is in the middle of the presentation, so we got to back up here a bit. <laughs> it's not backing up. Hang on here. We're almost there. Here we go. <laughs> All right. I'm I'm Paul Perkins, and this is my wife Pat. We run between us. We run uh, about 70 hives in 12 locations. We have hives in Seattle backyards, the Center for Urban Horticulture, a Bellevue backyard, and Preston and three farm from the Socomi Valley. Um, don't see the pictures. Here I am in Pole City. You don't see this. No. Okay, try this again. I can see your pictures. You can see my pictures? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So this is Fall City, farm in Fall City. This is 
uh, our backyard. This is the hive we'll do an inspection of here in a few minutes. This one on the left. And then <clears throat> this is a farm incarnation behind a greenhouse, as you can see. This is from the uh, Center for Urban Horticulture. <clears throat> Put this in because this is the area where we used to meet before the pandemic. Um, so our company name is Seattle Urban Honey. And here's what one of our one pounder jars look like. And here's <clears throat> a smaller one. Um, during the pandemic here, we, we sell at the U District uh, farmers markets on Saturdays. And this is what we look like um, in this setting. Um, we're not at the market right now because we're too low on honey. But uh, by the end of May, early June, we'll be back at the market. We've, we've been at this for about uh, 13 years. And um, tonight, <clears throat> we'll be talking about managing hives for swarming and uh, show a couple of videos to illustrate this. But to start the season off, we always have to uh, remind ourselves that dandelions are very important. So um, there's a dandelion picture from April the 6th and a bee on it, just to help us get started. When we talk about swarming, I always have to remind myself that swarming is a reproductive instinct. So this is fundamental biology we're trying to manage. The bees can beat our efforts and it can look like this. Here's one at the UW Center for Urban Horticulture and these bees were swarming away. I think the, the, the sound you hear is not the bees themselves, but the fans on, on the uh, greenhouses. But this is where the swarm landed. Then here's a, another swarm <clears throat> that um, was in June of 2020. This is on the ground called a puddle swarm. And um, <clears throat> here's one near our house um, a, uh, a week ago Sunday. And uh, I'll tell you more about this one. This, this tree is about five feet from the sidewalk. But tonight's idea is that we want to put space in the brood area by moving frames of brood out of the brood area and replacing the moved, moved frames, brood frames, with drawn but otherwise empty frames. We try to impress the hive that they have space. They are not crowded. There is no need to leave the hive, taking the old queen and half the bees and finding a new home. The one they are in will do just fine. That's the message we're trying to impress upon these bees. However, as I said earlier, this is a reproductive urge. And so let's take a look at the bottom of the frames, because this is a place where the bees can start to give us some hints. So tipping those boxes up, like Kathy mentioned, does this does the job. So here's what we call a queen cup. See my cursor there, queen cup. Here they start to elongate it. And we look in these queen cups to see if there is royal jelly. So here's another one elongated. But if you look down at the bottom of this picture, here's one that's been broken. So in opening it, we often break these. Here's another queen cup. Here's another broken one. This is probably a broken one here. But this is this is uh, a set of hints that the bees give us. Here's another one that shows the royal jelly in the bottom of the cell. And you can sort of see down the middle here, uh, a, a larva. So this, if we hadn't have broken this, this could have become a become a queen. So these are the examples then that, that we want to uh, look for when we do this hive inspection here in, in a moment. Now the hive that we're going to look at overwintered like this. This is not the same hive but it's, it's uh, similar to the one we're going to look at. So the bottom box in, la in the last week of March got rotated to the top and then the middle box went to the bottom and the top box went to the middle. So this 
gave the impression to the bees that there's more space because they usually work their way up. So more space in their hive. The only time we don't do this is if we see brood in top box, second box, and third box. Then we just say, okay, you guys, that queen, you're, you know, the queen is doing very well. We'll put a, just another box on top. And then we will come back later and, and check on them. But that's, that's what we're working uh, from here. So here's our hive that we're gonna look at here. And uh, we're gonna do this in quick time. And here it is. Wait, 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 wait. This uh, wait a minute. Good morning. This is April 16th, 2021. And um, we're near Tangletown in Seattle. So here's a, this is a hive in our backyard. So we're near the shores of Green Lake. And first thing we're going to do here is open it up. And we're going to check this hive for, um, for any queen cells. So unstrap this thing and um, take the lid off. Well, we're in the process right now of um, taking out the uh, insulation. So I'll do that right now. There it comes. Put that aside. Then we're also uh, taking these hive blankets off. And uh, so I'll do that just a moment here. Hive blankets dry, so that's a good sign. Everything's working. Well done. And uh, let's see what we have here. These are all, and there are plenty on the, um, on the screen here. They uh, cast a little wax to the top, so that's off now. Then we'll um, take a look inside here. This is a hive that has been um, gaining weight the last several days. It happens to be one hive that we have a scale on. And um, you can see the numbers here are great. I got this whole smoke. Keep everybody calm. Looking over the top here. Things look pretty normal. I don't see any. Uh, well, I think I hear some brood in here. Okay. All right, we'll tip these boxes up now and uh, see what we have underneath. Nice heavy box. Okay, here's what we see. We're looking now for queen cells. And um, something like that. Nothing on the bottom. I was looking to see if there's any royal jelly down there. But I don't see any up here. And just for the uh, beekeeper's sake here, we're cleaning this, cleaning this stuff off. Yeah. Smoke.
plenty of larva here. Most of this is a looks like drone larva. We'll put this aside. Okay, let's check the next box. We'll put this one aside for now. That's a heavy box. up. Here's some old treatment for uh, mites. I don't see anything. Here that's um problem. Yeah, that's pretty good. I was looking for a for a your royal jelly. See if they're wet at the bottom. Okay, we'll put this box over. This hive has got brood all the way to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Not quite so heavy, but still pretty heavy compared to the first box. Mm -hmm. And then here's this third one. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Keeping their bottom board clean. This looks fine. So we'll close this up. Yeah. And what we do now is um this guy's down. Oh yeah, the hives themselves. Yeah. I mean, they're mostly hives that are like that are like in four to five boxes, and I'm down to three boxes. So yeah, the hives that, pe that people are getting are like. Oh yeah, that's what I'm telling them. Basically, they're getting a two for one deal because yeah, they should go. We should. Home. It's a winter queen. She really should go home and split them. Happy split hers, and I think David. Well, David is splitting his and buying queens, and then. Um, I don't know if Ben truly find a brood. We're going to switch it around with a drawn frame from the. This is full of nectar, both sides. Yeah. Okay, here we come. Second frame in. We've got some brood. There's something special. What is that? There's nothing in this one. So we'll take it out. But uh, that would be the location of a super seizure cell. Over here, 
Got plenty of brood here. Yeah. Look good. This next frame has even more. What we're trying to do right now is, is um, control this or manage, manage is a better word, manage this hive for swarming. So I'm going to take this frame right here and it's going to go into a third box. Put it over here, into the queen there, and we'll move this. Boy, not, this next frame is loaded. Do this. She's got fruit. <laughs> but this this was the original frame on the uh, outside here, so we'll leave it there. Putting a little purple south here, so this is a little easier. And it slides. So what we're trying to do with this with this technique is impress this queen that she has room. She doesn't need to leave. So let's see what this one looks like. Yeah, this will do it, I think. So nicely drawn. Not so nicely drawn on that side, but it's, it's empty. Let's go ahead and put her in. Okay, now I'll put this back on top and I'm going to move these frames over a bit. So this, this um, road here is more centrally located. This next frame here has brood on it. So this is up in third box, so she's working. There's brood there. On this side, so you got more. So we'll put that down here. And we'll stick this one. Right in here. So we've opened up the brood area in the second box down here. Trying to press upon this queen that she's got she's got room. Now, since this hive was so full of bees, and since the uh, the weight has been going up, we're going to give this this um, box two or this hive two boxes. The uh, maples beginning to bloom too in the area, so. This will get them, give them something to work on. And once again, press upon them that it, this is a good place to stay. They don't need to leave. They don't need to swarm. So these are drawn frames. Eight, eight of them are drawn. And then the, the ninth and tenth are, are new frames. So give them something to build out. They're always trying to keep the number of drawn frames increasing if you can. Put this back on top. Inner cover back on top. And then use the lid. So, what we've done today to try and and uh, manage swarming for this hive is to take a frame of brood here, move it up to three, box three, take an empty frame, a drawn frame, but empty, and move it down here into two, so that there's more space in the 
in the uh, in the brood area. Um, and this is the kind of thing you can do every week to 10 days. Just keep coming back to the hive, keep moving frames up. And um, if you were one who wanted to put queen excluders on, we, we don't, you know, so I didn't put a, there's no queen excluder in here. Um, this would be a time you could put a queen, ex, queen excluder in when, back when you had these boxes. But uh, otherwise, that's that's the technique here, trying to open up open up the, uh, the brood area to impress this hive that they've got room and they so they will not will not swarm it's not it's not fail safe but it uh, does impress the hive that they've got room so that's that's the video and I'll try and um, give you a screenshot when we do the presentation um, of the weight of this hive up to up to the 16th of April here Thanks. Hey, Wait a minute. Good morning. So here's the um, look again at this frame on the bottom this is not the same hive that we're just looking in but it's a good example the one we used before so we're looking for those queen cups and queen cells like these these broken ones down here and uh, so this is a good good thing to be looking for when you tip tip up those boxes so cleaning off the bottom of the frames and expanding the brood nest with Empty frames are two ways of managing for swarming. In addition, we added two boxes, as you notice, to the top of the hive. Um, and if you have taken a whole queen cell and an additional frame of brood, that too would have expanded the brood nest. In our case, we had we didn't have any whole cells to, to pull out. Um, now, what I'd like to show you here before we take some questions, um, is that if you do find a, a whole queen cell and it's not broken, um, you could then put it in a nook and uh, with a frame, another frame of brood and the bees can start another hive. So here's a, a video of this that uh, Pat will narrate. Some cells that we're finding. We're going to harvest these and put them into a nook with some bees and some resources, and that will become another hive for us. So this one has quite a bit of brood on it, as well as these one, two, three, four, five, six queen cells. handle it very carefully. I'm going to look to make sure that the old queen isn't on here. And I don't see her. So I'm going to put all of these cells in one hive and let the bees sort out which queen they want to keep. I 
frame has uh, two more clean cells on it. I'm trying to decide whether to stick them in with those other queen cells I just harvested or start a new nook. I think that they're going to go in with the, uh, the other cells I harvested. Or I can just leave them, take them off. I think that's not the stop. <laughs> Any questions at this point? I have one for you. Okay. Fire away. Why did Pat choose to put this second frame with the first one rather than start a new nook? What what was the, the prompt to choose one versus the other? <laughs> well, I hope you couldn't hear the whispering going on there, but um, we didn't have another box. <laughs> That's the reason. Otherwise, we would take that and start another another one. Yeah, that was just a practical thing. And the other, the other thing is, um, some some beekeepers will take that initial frame that had six cells on it, and they'll they'll cut out each of those cells and put it in a brood in a brood frame, and start individual nooks so they can start six nooks. Um, in our case, we've never really done that. Uh, we just stick the whole thing in there and let the bees figure it out. Okay. Well, let me. Oh, do people put their hands up to, to ask questions? Uh, they would. Those are older hands up, although we just got one new one. Eileen, do you want to ask a question? Yeah, so a couple of questions. Wow, I saw you completely tip that box almost like, you know, you rotated it almost 180 degrees. It totally freaked me out. I was like thinking, oh my God, <laughs> those frames are going to fall out. Uh, I guess you aren't worried about that. I know it's always hard to get them out. I don't know why I would think they would just fall out by themselves. So, but yeah, that was an interesting, interesting yeah. lesson for me. Yeah. The other thing, I, I actually I learned something too, um, just watching myself open that that original hive. Um, today, when we were working, and yesterday, when I scrape uh, down those those frames, when we, we look and check yeah. the cells. Um, I don't go picking that stuff up at the bottom anymore. <laughs> I just pick that box up and put it over, and then we'll clean off that next box from the tops, you know, a little smoke, uh -huh. makes it more efficient. But the only place where I worry about tipping those boxes up like that is a couple of places where we actually have highs on the edge of a cliff. Um, oh. We have some highs over on, the, on Queen Anne, over by the Aurora Bridge, and it just drops right off. <laughs> oh, God. So I have gone over. <laughs> Oh, so we keep a hand on it. Yeah, but, yeah. You you can just tip them up and let them sit on their bottom, you know, on their sides. Yeah, that's the interesting. High. They're stable. If I could get a word edgewise, um, Paul rotated the camera so it looked like we were rotating oh. that box further oh, than we true. actually rotated it. We only rotated it ninety degrees from the original. Oh. That's okay. true. Yeah, yeah. So. The other question are are the, were those all are those all wooden frames? No, no. Some are, some are plastic, some are wooden. Uh huh. Yeah. Any preference or any thoughts? Oh, we use plastic because it's easier. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just take them out of the box, put them in, and the bees seem to to enjoy it, to accept them just fine. I noticed your boxes all fit together really well. I I have. I, I feel like maybe I guess my boxes aren't like as finely put together yeah. as yours. Yeah, some of ours don't fit too well. Um, we we have some boxes that aren't quite square. We we bought a set of boxes several years ago from another beekeeper that was going out of business, and and uh, they were new, and <laughs> weren't quite square. So anyway, we we try to adjust it to make sure it fits. So. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yes, yes. No, you're welcome. All right, well, seeing if there are no other questions, let me just finish here with a little bit on swarms, okay? Because this, <laughs> like Kathy says, you really can't hold these bees in the box. Um, so uh, let me get to my correct buttons here. And that should bring me back. Come on. There, yeah, almost. There we go. Okay. So um, I was going to tell you more about this this forum uh, last week Sunday. Um, this swarm ended up in this tree five feet from the sidewalk, and it was pretty ornery. Um, it a couple of people got stung. The uh, these swarms, as you know, are are loud. You didn't, you know, we had spectators for this one, and uh, so it's, people are pretty pretty tolerant of bees and very curious about them, um, but stay their distance. And um, so this swarm in the tree, I had to get it down. So one method for doing this is to use a bucket. So here I am on a three-legged ladder, and um, I've got my five-gallon bucket here, and I'm going to go up underneath this thing and try to get it down. I'll show you what happened. Get closer and closer here. And try to get that bucket right underneath and shake. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> I did get quite a few bees in the bucket, but um, I had a bunch on the ground. And one of the interesting things about bees on the ground and hives is that. Um, you can often get them to walk in. So here's here's a little picture of them walking in. The same 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 bunch. You can hear them. They're up flying. If if um I had this if I had this on um, on QuickTime you would have had a smoother picture and you would have seen the seen the bee just trying to troop in it's it's pretty pretty cool to watch them do that. Um, then there are also more challenging ones, and um, this uh, this one was way up in a tree. <laughs> this is out near that farm on Falls in Fall City. And so you can see, I've, I've uh, taped together a couple of extension poles and I have my bucket way up there. And I also have an, a longer three-legged ladder and I try to get this thing. So Pat was um, was filming this and here's what she got. I'm on the ladder here and here we go. It's very hard, at the end of that pole, it's very hard to balance the bucket itself. And then <laughs> right there. I really can't right. see very well here yeah. what I'm doing. So I try. I sort of miss. And then I try once more here. Making sure I don't fall off the ladder too. And I get them, and then I lose them. <laughs> so, lesson there is uh, some highs are just just too high. Um, so, this is a much more gentle hive. I mean, a swarm. This one's in a tree that uh, you know you can just reach reach up to it. And then, 
There are others like this one. This was at the Center for Urban Horticulture. And uh, this one was in uh, August, or April of 2019. And um, so here's what I did. Just cut it right out. And then walked it down to the box. So to bring this to a close, and since we're meeting in April, here's maple blossoms from April 2015. So this is a good time of the year for maple blossoms to be uh, you know, delivering plenty of nectar for, for bees. Uh, some places right now, they're even a little past their, their, their uh, prime blooming. But um, this is what, what we want. So there's a bee working away on on uh, on a blossom and uh, what we're after here uh, eventually is this so that we love to see this capped honey uh, ready for us to take and extract and um, to do this we got to keep the bees in the box so thank you for your attention and are there any questions Feel free to raise your hand. Anyone? <laughs> I'm just going to jump in because I keep raising my hand and I, I don't know if it's working or not. Is that okay? Go for it. Um, so I just wanted to ask, have you done anything with queen screens? So using the cells and moving them up above an active hive and then having the queen screen blocking them. So now you have a queen below and then the cells above and then you hatch the queen and now you have two hives together. Does that work? I've read about that, but no, we've never done that. No, we haven't. Yeah, I'm just always curious if they're, if, if the queen hatches, if there becomes the little war that goes on, you know. They yeah. can't get to each other, but will the bees kill one or the other? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. I think we have a question from Jerry. Okay. Jerry? Jerry, I think you have a sound issue like last time. I don't know what you did, but it worked last time. You might want to try the same. Well, Jerry figures it out. Sonia, do you want to ask your question? Yeah. I actually was curious about um, how far the bees go when they swarmed. I unfortunately lost half my my new nucleus last year and they swarmed and I looked all over the neighborhood for them and I couldn't find them anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our our experience anyway is that they're usually pretty close. Like the swarm I was showing you from a week ago Sunday, mm -hmm. those bees probably went um, 50 feet from the hive. That was it. Um, other times, though, like we did have one swarm over in Bellevue where they went way up in a tree. I mean, that, it's, it was uh, I, there was a question earlier uh, about a swarm up 50 feet. This this thing I think it was 80, <laughs> but um, it was right up there. But um, the other phenomenon we've seen is that um, swarms will leave a hive and then come back, hive and come in. So that's that's quite a phenomenon too, where they'll actually enter the hive again. And, and uh, in the backyards where we have bees in Seattle, the hive hosts are very very diligent often 
in watching the hives. They know when we rotate the boxes, they know when we put new boxes on, of course they know when we harvest, but whenever we stop by, you know, they'll, they'll tell us what's been happening. And of course they're the ones that tell us if the swarm is, is going on. But um, yeah, so they're usually pretty close. And so I, I, if you lose them, I, <laughs> I don't know where they went. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the main idea I just wanted to leave with everyone is similar to what uh, Kathy Cox was saying too, I think, that um, opening up space in the brood chamber is, is, is pretty effective. It's not perfect, but it's pretty effective. And um, it always disappoints, disappoints us when one of our hive swarms because that cuts our production way back. And we want to keep those hives full, but not too full. <laughs> I want to keep them busy. But um, trying to manage that brood is uh, important. And, and our first hint, of course, is tipping those boxes up and, and looking at the bottoms and uh, checking what's going on there. Those are big hints. So thank you very much. And um, Hope beekeeping goes well for you, especially you, you that are just beginning. If I could just tell you one story. Um, when we started, we um, we bought a package. We had bought the bee suit and everything. We told our neighbors that we're going to package these bees. So when we when we got our package, we had neighbors watching us. <laughs> and so we dumped them in. <clears throat> it always seems kind of ungracious to kind of dump them in. But uh, we did that and put the lid on and put them on our little hive stand and, and um you know in the next week or so i was looking around the backyard and i said pat there aren't any bees any bees in this backyard we need more sit down and buy, buy another package and and uh hive that and then both both packages well when they were in 10 frame equipment both swarmed and then and we caught them so then we had four <laughs> and then so at the end of that summer we had we had all this honey. What are we going to do with this? <laughs> As you know, one hive can produce, produce quite a bit, but four, that's a lot. You know, you can't, you can't eat that much. So that's the point at which we started looking around for where are we, we going to sell this stuff? And um, so anyway, that's how, that's how it started for us. One, then two, then both swarmed. And then, um, then we had a lot of honey lined up on the shelf. So anyway, thanks. And um, Hope beekeeping goes well for you. Keep looking at the bottoms. Tip them up. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Pat. <clears throat> and thank you, Kit. Thank uh, you. Kathy for uh, answering all of the questions. Yeah. Good. See ya. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.